if we're lucky, we'll heal her owl. <laughs> Why am I up at three o'clock in the morning? To meditate, of course. I want to remind you all of that beautiful haiku by Basho. Here I sit doing nothing and the spring comes and the grass grows all by itself. Beautiful Zen haiku. So <laughs> what's the point? Well, in meditation, as in life, in nature, spring comes by itself. These are very meaningful words. It's not just about the seasons. When you first start in meditation, it's like spring. Huh? Oh, I'm going to become enlightened. This is going to be great, you know especially if you get a little taste, you know. Everything seems easy. Oh, this is going to be fast, right? And then summer comes. <laughs> and the doldrums. Those hot, windless days uh, that seem to drag on forever. Then autumn comes things start getting chilly. And finally, winter. And it seems like, oh, I'm never going to get enlightened. This is too hard. It just goes on and on without any end. How am I going to do this? You know, if this doesn't happen to you, you're not making any progress. It seems like nothing is happening. <laughs> and indeed, nothing is happening. And that's the goal. When <laughs> in Brahman, nothing ever happens. Brahma is complete stillness and peace. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. There's no time, no space, no energy, no action, not even an object of consciousness. I mean, talk about nothing. <laughs> it's the void that we spoke of recently. But when meditation is mature, the void fills with light. That which seems to be nothing turns out to be everything. And that nothing happens turns out to be the greatest bliss ever. So you see, the winter of meditation is absolutely necessary to the spring of enlightenment. It follows that classical curve of attaining expertise in everything. It's called the 80-20 rule. You get 80% of the gains in the first 20% of practice. And you think, oh, I got it. I got this, right? Then you hit the wall. <laughs> and you go, uh, yeah. And you think, oh my God, this is going to take forever. It does take a long time. It's true. Just like you get the first 80% of the gains in the first 20% of practice, you get the final 20% of gains in the 80% of time of practice. Most people, they get that first taste after they're 20, they've put in their 20% and they think, oh, that's it, I'm enlightened. 
and then they go off to conquer the world. And if they're unlucky, they become popular and fully engaged and they forget all about their practice. <laughs> but those who are fortunate get smacked down and fail to conquer the world. And then they have to come back to their cave and conquer themselves. That's the real work. That's the real sadhana. So don't be discouraged. Yeah, you'll get discouraged anyway. <laughs> but don't give up. Persist. Because the real goodies are right at the end. Huh? That last 20%, oh man, I'm in it now. It's so wonderful. Huh? When that stillness, that, that boring wall of nothingness turns into the most beautiful thing you've ever experienced and ever can experience. So just sit, doing nothing. That is the whole instruction for meditation. A lot of people do what they call meditation, but it's really thinking. You know, they're noting this and they're observing that and they're witnessing this other thing. And they're doing this and doing that and trying to raise the Kundalini and all kinds of stuff. That's not meditation. That's thinking. Pretending to meditate. Meditation, real meditation, is complete stillness. Because Brahman is complete stillness and peace. Boom, that's it. What else? Oh yeah, just wait. <laughs> and you might have to wait a long time. But the spring will come. You have to go through the dead of winter. You have to go through that part of practice that's so boring and seems to be with such little reward. Because you're subconsciously expecting something to happen. And the whole idea is to get to that place where nothing happens. Then once you get used to that, you realize, oh, this is the spring at last. And everything becomes clear. And the grass grows. That's the meaning of the grass. The grass is the miracle. Huh? The miracle is that we give up trying to be somebody and trying to make stuff happen. Trying to become, trying to know, possess, do. Huh? We drop all that action because that action creates karma that keeps us bound. It's as simple as that. Once we drop it, then the enlightenment becomes possible. But still, it doesn't come because of our doing. Our sitting is not the cause of the enlightenment. How is that? Because God is with us always. God or Goddess, Brahman, Consciousness, whatever you want to call it, Nibbana, <laughs> is always with us. The Turiya state of consciousness is always with us. But we get lost in waking, dreaming, and sleeping. And we forget the real consciousness. So when we drop all that other stuff, then there's nothing else left. And we settle into our real self with a capital S. And that's the spring and the miracle of the grass growing. 
and it happens all by itself. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti.